Good morning, Austrian Piper. How are you doing? I thought I'd try and rig up a. Uh, I've got a clamp screwed to the wall behind my lathe. <clears throat> And I'm just trying to get it lined up so that it's nice and clear. I'll zoom in a little bit. It's actually above head height, so I can't actually see what I'm doing. I'm reaching up over the top of the phone. trying to zoom in on the picture and I'm not seeing what I'm doing. Good morning Geek, how are you this morning? It's an early start, I've got a couple of hours in the garage. Probably won't get through the whole pipe. I'm going to go out with it's bank holiday here in the UK. And I'll probably be going out with the family a bit later on. So I've got a couple of uh, sort of tripods here in the garage. So I'll probably be moving it around a bit. But uh, while I'm working on the lathe here. Um, I thought it would be nice to give you guys an overhead view so you can see what's going on. There we go. Should be a bit better. Okay, that should be good. When I'm using the tail stock, it should be able to come in a little bit. So you should be able to see that. Is the audio okay, guys? Cool, thank you. All right, so here's my uh, question this morning. I can either do something like small, something similar to um, the little pot that I made a while back. Um, hi Tree, good morning, how are you doing? So I can either, as I say, do something with a small block like this. It's actually got some nice grain. So I could probably do something similar, like a small pot, something like that, or a billiard. Um, alternatively, I can go in for the long haul and do some kind of uh, plateau freehand. This is my only other sort of high grade block that I've got. Um, you guys probably have seen the, uh, the puffer pipe that I made a while back, um, sort of like a, a boat kind of uh, plateau freehand um, so I can do something similar with this um, the only difference with this one is is that the other one the shape went all the way around the plateau went all the way around and I was able to get a really nice um, sort of a bridge kind of design where where the stem was able to go into the plateau and the bowl was in the plateau I could probably tilt it and do that Something like that. 
Um, it certainly makes for a, a nicer sort of bridge design. Whether I wanted to do the same design again or not, different kind of thing. Um, and I'm always trying to sort of um, push myself and learn something new. Um, so although I've only done one such pipe, so it would be good to do another one. Um, I was thinking this morning about doing uh, a dripping wax kind of design where you've got the sort of a, a, a darker or rusticated finish and then you've got the smooth sort of drip so it looks like a candle but I think that um, that's a little bit ambitious and maybe a bit premature for stuff like that but I mean, there's no, no reason not to try it but uh, so I'm in two minds as to which way to go any thoughts guys? Tree, no, um, no boot sale this morning. I was actually uh, on the way back from taking my son to the airport yesterday morning, and um, I was coming back from Luton, so I decided to do a, a search on Google car boot sale near me, and there was one literally half a mile away from the route that I was on on the way back. So I popped into one. It was near the Mill Hill area. Um, Boreham Wood, that kind of area. Quite a big car boot sale. Not a single tobacco product, not even an ashtray. I was rather disappointed. I was in there for about half an hour, just walked through the whole thing. Not a single tobacco related product. That's how it is here in the UK at the moment. Perhaps sort of more further out you, get, you do get more uh, um, stuff like that, I don't know. Anyway, I was disappointed, but there you go. I'm not expecting much of an audience this morning because uh, it's a bit early, it's bank holiday. People are either going out for the day or still sleeping in. And America has only just gone to bed, so. But I just thought it'd be fun to put it on. Imagine you're either up early or haven't gone to bed yet. How are you doing? p.m. Geek, whereabouts in the world are you? Just having a look at some of the stems that I've got. Just trying to formulate some kind of idea in my mind as to what I want to do in terms of the block. You're from Iran, cool. I just heard on the news this morning but uh, America's sending a task force over to you guys. Five AM, wow. That is early. See this is this is quite a nice, interesting um, stem. Square shank on it, so it can be married up to a square shank. Um, and it's got a big tenon there, which I could drill out to 9mm if I really wanted to. Fair bit of work though. Now these stems um, I bought this way, so the way it comes is, they come sort of very rough and ready. I don't know how much detail you can see. You can see that they're pressed, they're stamped. You can see all of this sort of the seams on this on the edges here. I don't know if I'm hitting the camera or not. There you go. So all of that has to be sanded down and polished, and this is very sort of dull. So you have to sand it and polish it to get it to shine up, and then you can bend it and you can do you know whatever you want. You've obviously got to get the tenon to the right size to fit uh, the pipe so that's something which you've got to plan out in advance 
make sure you're getting the right uh, diameters on the uh, mortise um, and that's that's the bit which I really I don't enjoy and um, because although I do have a tenon cutter I do have uh, a tenon cutter tool which I bought from Vermont Freehand, uh, Vermont Freehand. Um, it's a pain and it's very imprecise um, and you just uh, you're slightly off and you're, and you're done. Uh, you overdo it and it's loose, you got to start again. You make it too tight like I did the other day, I put it into a, into a pipe and I cracked the uh, mortise. Which I was very, very disappointed about, to be honest, because I worked hard. Starting with a, a new uh, rustication and the pipe itself was really starting to turn out really nice. But, um, I'll hold on to that. Uh, piece of briar. I'm not sure what I've done with it now. And uh, when I get a little bit more experience then hopefully I'll be able to do something with it. Here it is. This is the um, the one I was working on and that was I was starting to sort of practice um, on uh, learning how to do a C-Rock style rustication. And when I was um, fitting the stem to it, that happened. So I was rather disappointed. Other than that, it was perfect. Beautiful drill, bang on, bang in the middle. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but that you know, the drill was perfect. I don't know if you can see the hole or not. There you go, you see that? Bank center. All was going well with this pipe. It's a nice sort of shape all around. Some quite nice grain sort of coming through there. A little bit of a sand pit, but not the end of the world. And, but I was gonna rusticate, so the, the bits with the tape, um, were gonna be smooth. And then the rest was gonna be rusticated with this new style rustication. So I was quite disappointed when that cracked. But that's life. You can't win them all. Cheers. Three, 14 pipes, oh my gosh. Film at 11, what does that mean film at 11? You're gonna watch a film? Or you're going to uh, upload the film, the video? I do my best to be organized, but it never seems to be enough. I'm trying to find some of the uh, bits for my rotary tool. I did want to show you um, a pipe that I'd um, worked on yesterday. 
This is a, a lovely Caminetto, which I bought on eBay. Uh, it's my first Caminetto. Not had one before. Really nice rustication. This is the type of rustication which I'm trying to learn. Uh, it's a big pipe, this. It's got a huge bowl. You can catch the words Caminetto on there. Don't know how the lighting's looking. There you go. But it's really, really nice rustication on this. Um, but the uh, the rim was quite bad, um, so I sanded that right back to the briar and restained it and polished it, and it's come out really nice. It's a bit darkened because it's well smoked, um, but otherwise it's very, very clean, beautiful. It's a big pipe, that I will tell you. Here's my um, Ascorti square shank, and you can get an idea of the difference in size. It's a big old pipe, and it's 9mm, which is nine. nice. All right, cool tree, we look forward to that. I do have a little tool kit which came with my rotary tool um, and I can't find it. I've got a universal kit which I bought um, with some bits in it but there's a particular bit which I prefer to use when cleaning off a uh, plateau. Um, and I just can't find it. I do know what I've done with it. Oh there it is. It was on the shelf where it was supposed to be but it was hidden by the um, lathe. Uh, Thing. Technical term, the lathe thing, the chuck. I don't even think it was that one either. Let's get moving because you guys are going to get bored out of your brains. Yeah, it is a nice rustication, uh, Geek. It's, I really do like uh, the sea rock rustication. So let's make a start with this. So I just want to get an idea of the quality of the um, the bow underneath there, the plateau, and then we'll see whereabouts I want to. It's quite a slow process, so um, you can leave this on in the background if you don't want to watch it. Um, but um, I just thought it'd be fun to do it live. But we'll see how we go. I'm going to put the actual rotary tool in a drawer so that you don't hear the vast majority of the noise and hopefully it won't vibrate too much.
should have done this first actually because this will give you a really quick idea of what it's looking like underneath. The bowl, when you get the flat toe tops, they're completely covered in a like a crust. And you need to just get rid of that crust and then you really get to see what's lurking underneath. And you start to see a beautiful um, plateau grain beneath.
tree. Are you uh, still there? Task number four. What type of tobacco is that, a geek? That's not the, uh, the one cutting coins, is it? I didn't realise that you guys have access to YouTube uh, in Iran. And you've got easy access to tobacco, Geek? You can get tobacco easily enough in your own. Were you at the same uh, boot car boot sale as we met at the uh, tree? Well, Geek, I reckon it takes a fair amount of dedication for you to be part of the YPPC. Is YouTube official? I'm just going to shift to a tripod because I think that uh, the location is giving us trouble with the connection. Just bear with me a second, guys. Bear with me a second, guys. It's just going to go a bit unclear for a bit. There we go. Sorry about the hassle. Hopefully you'll get a better connection now.
Hi, David. How are you doing? Right, where was I? Yeah, it's a bank holiday today, David, here, and um, I thought I'd start off a new pipe. I'm undecided on shape so far, so for the moment I'm just sort of getting beneath the crust of the plateau, just to really see how good it is. Yeah, it's, it's called Bank Holiday, but you guys have different national holidays in different countries. You know, you have Thanksgiving and you have various different things in the US, which we don't have here, but it's all the same principle. National holiday, no, no official work. Although nowadays that means a lot less than it used to mean. Um, I remember as a kid... Uh, Hang on, I think I've got the phone wrong way. Hang on a second, guys. That's better. No, it doesn't want to let me do that. Sorry. Sorry about that. And um, when I was a kid, the streets used to be deserted on a Saturday and a Sunday. Completely deserted. And nowadays, Saturday is still pretty quiet around where I am, but Sundays, Sundays is often busier than the rest of the week. Shops are always busy because a lot of people are off work on a Sunday. So everybody does their shopping. They go to the hardware store, they go to the, uh, the tool shops and the uh, DIY places. Look at the difference between this area here and there. This is quite a bit darker, and that's a really nice colour. And I'm trying to kind of get the same. Get me leaving that.
Well, I just got a delightful picture on WhatsApp from my wife. My grandson has just thrown up all over her. Morning, Sam. Yeah, we did that not so long ago. We do it every so often. But it's uh, just very dusty at the moment because I've been using it as a, a workbench almost. time are you at at the, at the moment Sam? Ah, 6.02. Not too bad. so you can see a bit better. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is probably going to put a mortise in there somewhere, roughly around there, and the bowl somewhere around there. So we get this nice little area here will be right in the middle, so a nice sort of clean, brighter area, and we've got some really nice areas there. So at the moment, what I'm thinking is really quite a traditional shape is either to do as before and do a bit of a boat like that sort of that kind of thing but that would be boring um, or to do something like that what do we think hi Tim so I'm saying either to do something like we did last time which was a boat with no with nothing cut out or to do some kind of a like a freehand Dublin shape and sort of keeping that plateau. It's not the most attractive bit of area there for the mortise, but 
it's okay. Or to just do something like that, which is a straight sort of boat shape like I did last time. So really here, it's only going to have a small little chunk taken out. So I want to kind of fan that out sort of like that. So it'll be quite a big chunk there on the shank. And that's going to be a, a, a fair bit of shaping on the, on the, well, see here, I won't be able to shape very much on the wheel. And I don't know how to do that on the wheel, the, uh, the shank area. So a lot of that will be hand sanding. And here, in order to keep the plateau, I'm restricted. So I'm going to have to go there. I can't make it wider, sort of a, a fanned out. I mean, I could if I did it this way, but then it would mean doing a, a mortise there. And I think it would be nicer to do it on the uh, plateau area. Yes, yeah, Sam, it's certainly going to be easier as well to do a boat, but um, I've done that one already and I'm really just, I want to have fun, you know. Um, just try something new. I don't want to keep doing the same thing. And this is my only decent block that I've got left now. The rest of the blocks that I've got are sort of this kind of thing. Just small, really small square blocks. They're not overshone and, and I really can only get a very small pipes out of these. You know, like a, a little, um, almost, you know, um, the the, uh, the Dunhill um, cherry wood style. Not even the cherry wood. You know the ones which have got the very thin slender, uh, the Don, I think it's called. Uh, so you've got like a, a, um, almost no shank. It's like a stubby little mortise um, with the long, thin, tapered stem. Um, I had one of those once and um, they're very, very nice. But that's essentially what I'd have to do here. Just a, really just a very small pipe, a pot or something like that or a billiard with a little stubby shank there. Um, really just see what people thought, get your opinions. Um, I wasn't made up when I started this morning. I mean, I've been going for uh, uh, nearly three quarters of an hour, so we're at a, sort of slightly further down the line now. So, in terms of the stem, if I want to keep this 9mm, I'm a bit restricted, because I've only got a couple left now. I think we're going to go for the freehand Dublin, yeah. Paul Wilson shape, I don't know what that is. Um, so I think I'm going to go, I've either got one of these type of stems. Um, oh, Winslow, right, okay, fine. Yeah, it is a bit like that, the freehand Winslow. Um, what's it, Nording, or um, it's a similar kind of shape to that, and a similar kind of shape to the... Uh, to Mike Billington, Blake Marbriar's uh, freehand, very similar. Um, so I've got a tapered stem, or I've got a saddle bit stem. Yeah, that's that, I was saying that the other day, Sam, I do need to get some church organ stems. That's really why I was looking for them, because of these blocks. Um, so there's that. Or that, and I think it's gonna, this is a little bit chunkier, which I think will probably work a little bit better. It depends how deep I go in as well. If I go, um, I think that will work better, no? What do we think? That's them. 
No, it's got to be the bigger one. So that's going to go in like that, and then I'll just give it a soft bend once it's made. So the first thing we've got to do is get the mortise straightened off, squared off, and then drilled. Once that's done, um, I'll do the chamber, drill it, and then sort of on the uh, bandsaw, cut that out and cut that out, and then the rest will have to be done pretty much by hand. Um, as far as this plateau is concerned, I'm just worried that if I keep going, I'm going to end up ruining the plateau, but there are bits there which still do need to come off. A bowl for the falcon. Well, I don't know how to do the turny bit at the bottom for a start, uh, the screw at the bottom of the falcon, and I don't smoke a falcon, so not much point there. I can always ask you for a falcon bowl if I wanted one, seeing as you've got half of the world's falcon population. Right, let's get the old chuck on. Let's chuck on the chuck. What's going on here? That's going to have a very, very sort of small chunk taken out there. Otherwise, there won't be much of a sort of Dublin shape.
like watching paint dry, isn't it? Um, do I like a, a pipe with a, a bamboo shank? I've never had one, to be honest. Um, and it's something which I would like to have. You don't tend to find many of the 9mm versions, though. Um, and it's, I'm really, I haven't started with, in terms of making pipes, with any kind of adornments. I haven't made any pipes with any adornments at all. So it's, it's at the moment, I'm just kind of getting to grips with shaping pipes. I've yet to uh, to make a stem from scratch. You know, it's, it's baby steps, baby steps. I have actually got some, a couple of my pipes for sale on my last pipe sale video. I don't sell pipes per se, but when I make a pipe which I'm reasonably happy with, enough to sell, I'll certainly 
let it go for sale. Um, I've sold a few pipes, nothing major. But I'm not at a stage where I would call myself a pipe seller, no, certainly not. But if you go back to maybe five or six videos, you'll see a, a video entitled A More Organized Pipe Sale, something like that. Um, and there you'll see several, uh, two, I think, two of my pipes which are for sale. They're called LCS pipes, London Calling Simon. Um, okay, so this basically, just trying to get all the uh, bits right here. So I've got a, that's roughly where the mortise is going to go for the nine mil. So initially I've got a drill um, that's the direction of that in order for it to be square with a shank and then after that I need to meet to that point there roughly um, I don't want to be drilling down to the bottom of the thing so I w once that's drilled then I'll be going at a different angle like that roughly to uh, get to the bottom of the bowl that's actually quite narrow thinking about it so if that's going to be 20 mil, let's see, I did a 20 mil bowl. That's going to be too narrow. So I might go for an 18 mil. Go for 18 mil. That's a lot better. going to be quite a deep bowl a 16 I think is going to be too I can go 16 I've got a, a 16 mil bit but I think it's going to be too narrow 16 mil so I'm going to stick with 18 but I do have to go, get down to this point in order to meet the draft hole there so that's that so we're going with 18 Thanks, David. Appreciate that. The, the broken ones, this is one of the broken ones which I showed earlier on, is certainly something which um, I definitely want to do something with that. I'm not exactly sure what, um, but I definitely want to do something. Because it's drilled perfectly, this pipe, both internally and on the shank, and it's a nice piece of briar. And uh, the rustication which I'd started doing really worked out really nicely. So um, at some point, when I'm a little bit more experienced. So I'm holding on to that uh, bowl and at some point we'll do something with it. Right, there's quite a lot going on here at this end. So I've just got to keep my head about me.
That's not a good sign. That's never good. I've been having a lot of problems with my computer as well at home, upstairs. The, um... I don't work with brass, no. Not yet. I'm too early on in my uh, pipe carving to work with anything other than the briar. Um... I've been having a problem with my computer in that it um, it forgets its boot, uh, its booting order, and it tries to boot from a different device, device, and it doesn't find the operating system. So I keep having to go into the BIOS each time when I start up F12, um, and and choosing the right drive. I have set it to do it in the right order, the right sequence, but it seems to just lose its setting. Maybe whenever I put in a card for my camera, sometimes it confuses it. But uh, thankfully, I learned that the hard way, so at least I can get out of it when it happens. something clunk to the floor, it was the drill bit, a small one. <laughs> bunch of these um, and they work very well the case you drop something on the floor and you just can't see it you're blind it's right in front of you but you just don't see it well unless I find it in between we're going for four mil which the truth to be told when you're using nine mil it's not the end of the world because you have a little bit of resistance from the filter so a little bit of a wider draft doesn't do any harm all right Okay, here goes. I was going to say, make it, doing it on a big block like this is making me nervous. Making sure that everything is squared off correctly. I'm not that good at all of that stuff, so. It's got to be really tight because I'm not holding 
that much briar compared to the size of the briar. So hopefully it got enough of a purchase on there. It's dug in quite deep now into the briar, so that should be okay. Oh dear. Okay. You know, I've realised I've not loaded the pipe yet today. He's so focused on what I'm doing here. Thank you, David. Okay, so first off, we're just going to square off. Right, let's get these moving parts out of the way. Let's get this cable away. Just powering the camera. That's that. That's that. Make sure there's nothing else in the way. Okay. Time to mask up. Well, here goes, people. It's a good one. Right, next up is the, um, actually for this drilling I don't really need the, I suppose the block could come off, hopefully it won't, but it could. Right, next up we're going to do the mortise for the 9mm. So this is a 10.2mm bit and it's basically pretty much banged on for a nine mil for a standard nine mil ten Thank you. 
Okay, so that's pretty much bang on. Straight in, nice and stiff. So nothing to do there. Um, next off, next off is just seeing if I want to recess it at all. If it's necessary. Even. I'm going to take the a little bit further in, just a fraction, the front, the front face, so that the the top edge, this edge here, just sits just just inside the uh, the bowl of the uh, plateau. So we're going to grab that bit once again. Sandpaper. I just want to make a slight bevel. Um, I suppose I could really use my um, damp sink if I can find it. No, it's too small. The one that I've got, I need to buy a new counter sink. The counter sink that I'm using is, is blunt basically, so I'll just uh, wreck it if I do it with that. So I will just do it with some sandpaper. Uh -huh. three mil bit. But I might still go with four mil to be honest. Uh, where's the other stand? There it is, where we left it.
Okay. Right, that's that done. Now I just need to test to make sure that it fits with a filter because I've taken the face further in, it makes the depth shorter inside. So I've done that mis mistake before and the, the two ends didn't meet, so I've just got to check. That it actually, no. Uh, yeah, it does. Surprise myself there. That's pretty spot on that. I think I should do a little fraction more because I do find that afterwards there isn't enough of a travel. And then the two ends don't meet really well once you're actually smoking it. So I'd rather put a minute amount of movement, even though I get frustrated myself when I buy a pipe and there is movement with, with a filter where you draw. bother me but I've learned to live with that because it's, it's a with 9mm it's not an ideal process but let's get as close as we can right next the next thing which is what I'm really nervous about and that is I now have to tilt this you know when you buy a, a bent pipe you will often see that the um, you'll often see a little bit of a, a dent over there and that's because they reposition it now to get the angle and they're drilling at an angle so it rubs on the bottom of this mortise area and that's what I'm going to be doing now in order to get this I don't know if you can see it but basically at the moment We've drilled along this line, this axis here, so that's straight and square. But now I need to drill along that axis there to meet the bottom of the bowl. So I need to reorientate this so that this is horizontal. That's what we're going to do. So I think I'm okay. I've got to be reasonably confident that everything else is square. Until now, the, the stuff that I've been making, the pipes that I have made, have all been uh, drilled with a 3mm bit. Having dropped this a minute ago, I went with 4mm. I'm just thinking now whether I should go back to 3 or leave it at 4 Um The pipe that I be recently re-drilled, if you recall, it was a Tom Phillips pipe. Um, and that one, I can't remember if I drilled it with re-drilled it with 3 or 4 Because I think he had it at about 2.5mm, and, and I found that to be far too tight.
that nice. Have a great day. I didn't realize how late it is, it's already 12 o'clock and I've not yet eaten anything. Good job I haven't started smoking now. Right, so what do we think people? Three mil or four mil? Any uh, comments? You know, I think four mil makes sense. I'm just thinking aloud. I think four mil makes sense because the bowl is going to be quite deep. So you're going to have to have a pretty good draw there. And the fact that it's going to be nine mil, I think it makes sense to go with four mil. So I think I'm going to do that. I appreciate that geek. Neither am I, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm kind of guessing as I go along. So what I've started doing now as well is that when I mark this up, I do it a little bit short rather than take the risk of overshooting it and going too far, I do it a little bit short and then I continue to turn the drill by hand afterwards if I need to, the, the, the drill bit. I really could do with a, a deeper workbench to be honest, but um, I'm kind of multi making multi use out of a, a space that I've got in my garage. And um, if I tip over too much space, then I run over room for other stuff that I need it for. So making do, as one does, as one has to in life. Wish me luck from this point on, no going back. Kind of unnatural because you, when you look at it, it's the first time I'm really doing uh, a, an unusual angle. So when you look at the way it goes in there, it's it's actually not too bad. So I shouldn't end up with that little groove, that notch. But it's just unnatural to look at. You know, you're looking at it sitting at the bottom of the mortise there, and you just I don't know. I just you know hope for the best. I think it's in line. If you have a look at it there, depends on which angle you look at it. But over there, it looks plumb. There he goes.
careful not to scorch the inside of the thing too much. See the smoke coming off it? I can smell it. If you'd have smell of vision, you'd smell it too. Hi Suffolk, how are you doing? Happy bank holiday. shot it. Well, this one we're going for a bit of a freehand Dublin kind of situation. Little plateau. Okay. Right, we hope for the best on the draft. Now we've got to move towards the bowl. So, here we go. So that's uh, the shape, Suffolk, that we're going for. You can see that there you go. Good afternoon, Bulldog. <laughs> right, let's get the bowl drilled. So we said we're going for an 18 mil. I think once I've got that drilled, we're gonna break. Because I've got to, I'm gonna go out with the family for the for the afternoon. And I think we're going to Covent Gardens, so you might see some clips of that later if I do any video. To go and snuff into the uh, tobacco nest there. Oh. Oh.
Right, so this is the 18mm. Make sure we're still at the right length. Okay, so this we can do incrementally without. And we can just do it incrementally and keep checking if we've hit the spot or not. I always make a mark of it on the top there and it just gives me confidence when I see when I've got it lined up the drill bit hits the mark so that's uh, a good starting point for show sure. okay people the next stage it's those two bits which really get me kind of a bit nervous it's the draft and the bowl obviously and in this particular one because of the different angles um, I was particularly nervous if we hit it I'll probably do a jig I'll bring you closer to the action Going with 18 mil here. Right, so my first litmus test to see if I've got the drill through is I blow through and see if dust comes out. So that's going to be the first uh, little check that we're going to do.
always a bit uh, nerve-wracking to know which way we want to go. Whether we want to drill a little bit more on the draft. Or on the uh, chamber. But got to go chamber. Just do it bit by bit and see. Right, watch for uh, dust. If any comes out of there, give me a shout. <laughs> there we go. We're looking pretty good. Yes, folks, I've got a beard. So before I completely take this apart, I just want to see if there's anything I can do that will improve things. So just to show you, um, right, I put a pipe cleaner in it, and it's right at the bottom there. Then if you can see it, there you go. So it really is right at the bottom of the uh, bowl. So I couldn't really be happier there. I was concerned that I might overshoot it again, but um, it's spot on really, thankfully. So we can dismount the block.
just thinking, is there anything else that I need it for? Uh, maybe just the stem. Yep, actually. So I'm going to the stem. Tightly, you can refine the teeth marks. And uh, you know you're in the right orientation again. So we'll put the stem in. So it looks a bit weird now, but obviously we're going to bend the stem. So because it's like that at the moment. In actual fact, I think I'm going to sand this one by hand. I think there's uh, too much going on here. Um, that bit there I could do with sanding on the lathe, but I can't because of the plateau. So I'll have to worry about that afterwards. So, it comes off. Next stage is the bandsaw. Okay, so we want to cut that bit out and just cut, trace all that round. There we've got that drilled. So we're going to end up hopefully with something along that kind of size there. And I don't know if you can see, there's a very slight little divot there from that drilling. But I'm very happy with the drill overall. Just going to double check again that the uh, filter works. There we go. It draws okay. Actually, it could do. The bowl is drilled. That is the bowl. Um, I'm going to drill it a little bit more um, because the uh, I think it needs a bit more room. Nine mil is a bit, I think it's a bit tight. Because you're drilling at an angle, so the actual draft hole is not in line with the mortise. So so basically, you drill the mortise like this, but the draft hole is going like that. So, where you get to the end of the mortise for the nine, the hole is actually up there. So, essentially, is that coming through? Yeah, essentially, the draft hole is up there. But the mortise is like that. So, the hole is right at the top there so in order to get a little bit more air going through the filter i'm just going to make it a drop deeper so there's a little bit more room for the air to get through there because as i was drawing it i could feel that it was whistling a little bit and i think it's going to need a little bit more just a touch The bowl itself is going to be, as I say, it's going to be, the top of the bowl is going to be like that, but the actual hole itself is there, it's going to be 18 mil, over here we're going to be, which the bowl's going to be, which I don't want, I'm thinking about, you know, how it's going to smoke more than anything else. 
it's got to smoke right. You know, the, the way it looks is obviously it's got to be sucking good. So we're just going to drill it a touch more. Cheers, Sam. I'm sorry about the connection. I'm, as I said, I'm out in the garage, so it's usually okay, but sometimes it drops in and out a bit. It's not always 100% reliable. The 320, yeah, the 320 is big, a very big ball. And this one is really going to be a long, sort of narrow ball. It's really quite a tall ball. Yeah, that's better. It's still um, pretty bang on because when you draw, you don't hear the filter shooting backwards and forwards, which you do get where sometimes you've got too much uh, room between the filter and the end of the uh, mortise. Okay. Just a question of whether I should do some of the cutting on the bandsaw now or not. Is the band saw. See you, Suffolk. I'm going to go soon as well. I'm just going to give it a few shots on the band saw, and then I'm just going to get the, the the rough shape, and then we'll call it a day for now. I'm attaching the hose to the uh, exhaust on the bandsaw, so it will be a bit noisy.
All right. So that's where we're at at the moment. So that I've got to obviously now really get down to a lot of sanding, which is going to be fun. I mean, it could do a thing a little bit more of a curve over there. Might just do that. But um, I'm going to say adieu for now. I've got to go out with the family uh, and we'll take this up a bit later on. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining.